I'm living a dream right now, you know, to have it, to be, I mean, Al Pacino, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, Leo, and a big director as Quentin. And here I am, like, seeing everything up close. I'm really excited and happy to be here. The beautiful thing about this one, it seems to be a confluence of all his films. Like, there's a little bit of the vernacular from Jackie Brown to Pulp to Bastards to Django. It's all, it, it, it seems like accumulation of everything, and it's pretty wonderful. We just fit. I mean, that's usually the way it is, you know? We just seem to fit. So uh, it made sense to both of us, and we got started and running, and it was, it's been great since. Yeah, it doesn't hurt, does it? I mean, there's no dialogue like Tarantino dialogue. Yeah. It's ten poles and sequels, and, and it's getting harder and harder to get original content to, to a big cinema. So it's great for us, it's fun for us, and, and, and thank God Tarantino's got one more left in him. You're in for a ride. In for a ride of a lifetime. Especially if... Uh, the LA fans because you're gonna see something that your folks grew up with you know and uh, it, it surprised me I mean the movie surprised me and everything but he always surprises me well Quentin has a boundless imagination and uh, an irrepressible talent he is incredible and, and, and he's one of the great writers and directors of, of our generation of all time and and so, you know, he, he approaches storytelling in, in his own unique way, creates the most vivid, vital characters that actors want to play, and makes films that have stood and will stand the, tent, uh, the test of time. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. They were all so nice and... Quentin was so creative, and they were all there working together, all in it together, really. It was a family. In one word, Quentin. I mean, the, the man is able to sit back for years at a time, and it's almost like a collage of different ideas, encounters that he has, stories that he hears, and he somehow puts all this stuff together and gives us as an audience no matter what they think of the movie, they know they're in for an incredibly unique experience every time they go. And that's why people keep coming back. And I would have never expected that he'd want to tell this story, but it was something that he's been thinking about for 20 years. He told us he, he sat down with a stunt double and, and, uh, and, and the actor, and they were just kind of a unit on, unto themselves. He goes, that would be a great buddy picture. And now here we are years later making this movie. Our characters are kind of two sides of the same coin. He's my, he's my stunt double, yet we, we develop this very unique relationship that helps us navigate our own survival. And it's the, from the brilliant mind of Quentin Tarantino to put these, all these different pieces together. Quentin, in the, for this, I think it's his most personal. I'm a big fan of movies that are about Hollywood, Hollywood culture. I love Singing in the Rain, for example, but this, is a very unique take on Hollywood because he takes it from the perspective of two guys that are outsiders. You know, Brad and I are in a changing culture, a changing industry. The industry is sort of going into the long-haired sort of hippie types and we're a product of the 50s and we're out of work. And Sharon Tate happens to be my neighbor and all of a sudden I see a new opportunity. But I just love that it's almost like, you know, we're voyeurs to a changing culture. And what Quentin does so well is just bring a sense of reality. Even though there's a almost fairy tale aspect to what he does, hence the name Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it is based in a lot of real fact and a lot of Hollywood history. And I think people will love a great art film on this scale about our industry. I am a Latina actress all the way from Chile, South America, and I got to share screen time and work time with Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, and I got to share time with Margot Robbie, and I, as I'm saying these words out loud in this carpet, the feeling I get of deliriousness, like, is this really happening? It's just so bizarre. So I can tell you I am living my dream, so that's pretty much what I can say. 
it's something I think we were all been waiting for. It's like the one movie that brought our two biggest legends of our time together. And I think it's just all that mysterious glamour that Hollywood had in that decade, in the 60s, that we kind of lost. And I think Brad and Leah have been able to sort of keep that alive in a world where everything is so exposed. So I think there's a lot of us as fans that are wondering, oh my God, what are they like together in a movie? And I got to kind of experience it, so it's a pretty big trip. It's a movie for movie lovers, you know? And I, nobody loves movies m more than Quentin Tarantino. I mean, I, yeah, it's just, it's kind of just a celebration of everything that he loves and of Hollywood, and it's very fun. It was so crazy. I mean, I, I, um, I worked with Brad Pitt mostly, which was an insane thing to say. Um, I'm pinching myself. It was really phenomenal. I feel really lucky to be here. I think one of the coolest things about working with him was that I was obviously so excited, you know, but he meets your enthusiasm right there because he's like a little kid on Christmas every day showing up to set and it's like the cool kids are excited to be there. Brad Pitt's excited to be there and Quentin's excited to be there so I was allowed to be unabashedly um, enthusiastic. I don't know if any other film coming out this summer is an original and, and this isn't a sequel, prequel, remake, this is a completely original genius idea out of Quentin's brain and um, you just never know what you're going to get with that. <laughs> I mean I'm the biggest Tarantino fan and you think I would have learnt by now. You never know what you're going to get with Tarantino and this mu movie is no exception. It's, um, it's a wild ride but it's an unexpected journey. I can't think of a time where I've ever seen this kind of ensemble come together for a movie and it, it takes a filmmaker like Quentin for that to happen. but. I'll never forget the table read looking around. It's like Al Pacino, Dakota Fanning, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, the list was endless and um, everyone's wonderful. But yeah, the cast is just insane. I think this movie just kind of transports you to 1969 and it was wild and it was fun and it was cool. And uh, yeah, it's just a fun ride, really fun. He loves movies more than anyone I've ever met. He's seen every movie you could ever think of, and he, he knows every detail of what made them amazing, and he loves why they succeeded, and he loves why they didn't, and he's just a huge fan. And there's no one better to make something than someone who loves it. I've been watching it for the first time tonight, so I'm going in just like all the fans here, as a fan of Quentin's work, as a fan of all these other actors' work. I can't wait to see it. and. I'm already, in, I'm already expecting the unexpected. Just getting to work with Brad is a career milestone for me. Had a lot of fun with him. You know, Margo is, is Margo, Leo is Leo, Kurt is Kurt. You, we could go on and on, but uh, you know, leave it to Quentin to assemble this super team. Who doesn't want to work with Quentin? That's, that's what it's all about. And um, you know, I feel honored that I get to speak Quentin's dialogue. I'm sure they feel the same way. And those guys, you know, I'm, I'm amazed they haven't worked together, so this is really something special. I'm here tonight because I loved working with Quentin. I love being in this film. He was a fan. I was the original Peter Parker in Spider-Man. I was the first Peter Parker ever to create the role. And funnily enough, it's an interesting little story, I think. The reason I met Quentin in the first time is because he was a fan, and I had no idea he was even making a movie. All I got was a message saying, Quentin Tarantino would love to talk to you. And I thought, yeah, cool, he loves Spider-Man. I knew he'd run it at his New Beverly Cinema. The pilot to my series, he ran as a feature. And I thought, that's fun, I love his work, that'll be a fun hour. And I talked to him, and at the end of the conversation, I got a phone call, and he offered me the role of Sam Wanamaker, the great director in this film. I think it's a very entertaining movie. I think one of the things, if people like my movies, one of the things that they might like about them is the fact that I make movies for an audience. I make movies I, I, that they indulge in big set pieces that gets an audience reaction. And so the thing about it is if you come see one of my movies, you're not going to just see images glazing over you. You're going to have an interactive audience experience. And to me, that's a good night at the movies. I don't call any of my movies comedies because I think there's more to them than just laughs, but when I'm writing them, when I'm making them, 
I think it's a comedy, all right? You know, I'm pacing it for laughs, and I'm pacing it for the audience reacting. And now I get them to stop laughing every once in a while, but then part of my thing is to get them to stop laughing and then get them laughing again. <laughs> If Margot didn't say yes, or if Margot's mother never met Margot's father and she didn't exist, I don't know what the hell I would have done. Because, I mean, she was just perfect. I can't imagine anybody else playing the part other than her. I got lucky. It's the casting cue of uh, the decade, if you ask me, if not the generation. And uh, if, uh, it wouldn't have worked if they, both, if they both hadn't have responded to the characters. You know, so people would say, hey, did you, did you have them in mind? They go, well, yeah, I had them in mind, but I didn't know I was going to be that lucky. <laughs> I feel with all of Quentin's films, like the, what resonates with me the most is just the detail and he's able to bring you into such a world with all of his films, whatever that world may be. I think that's one of the most amazing things about it. Well, I think it's really a testament to how much people believe in him and his work and his ability to create such an amazing project because I don't think this many unbelievably talented actors would have wanted to sign on if they knew and didn't trust his vision. I think it's an incredible cast. I'm so excited to see what everyone has done with it. There's a part of what he does in bringing characters to life that whether it's someone that is a real person or he's making up a character, he really gives you depth and a story for all of the characters, even if they're there very briefly. So you feel like you can invest in all of them, even if it's a momentary cameo that someone comes on. I think they really both wanted to do the parts and to work together and to work with Quentin. They both have worked separate with Quentin before. Um, Brad was in Inglorious Bastards and Leo was in Django Unchained, so they loved working with him. And uh, the three of them together, along with Margot, is magic. This is his love letter to Hollywood and to an age that we actually haven't really celebrated before. And I think that every time you watch a Quentin movie, there's so much you learn about other films. And in this one, there's even more films to learn about. So even when you think you're not learning about a movie, you may be. And this is his most personal movie that is from his days of growing up in Hollywood. I think that everybody is going to be having so much fun during this film. I think that they are not ready for the ending. And I think that they will get to see Leo and Brad play such amazing characters and just have such a fun ride all together. I mean, they just play off of each other so well and it feels like they've been working together for years and years. I'm so surprised that they haven't. And being able to see two icons working together just is incredible and being able to work with them personally I just was able to sit there and learn so much from each of them. It's a once upon a time in Hollywood experience. It's something that you've never seen before and I mean Quinn makes such legendary films that last a lifetime and I think that's what this film will be and in 15, 20 years people will be like we should make remakes and everyone will be like don't touch that film. <laughs> this movie is amazing. This movie knock your socks off. The ground underneath you shake a little bit. You don't want to know anything about the movie. You just want to go see it. Oh god it's such a deep dive. It's one of these movies that keeps giving. Days after the movie's over you keep thinking about it. Um, I saw it a while back and I'm still thinking about it and it's not one thing in particular. It's just a um, it's just an incredible experience. Well, it was really actually a lot of fun for all those reasons. You know, fun to work with a director I'd always admired, fun to put two giant stars together in the same movie, and fun to, you know, tack an original subject matter. Um, when everything is sequels and remakes, so it was it was cool. You just don't often get uh, Butch and Sundance in the same movie, and what that means is both of their parts have to be fantastic, um, and that's what you get with a great writer like Quentin. Well, it's distinctive and it's character driven, um, and I think I find it Quentin's most. Uh, heartfelt movie actually which isn't a word that's often applied to him but I think the film's very touching and very moving so I I think they may find it surprisingly emotional